we call it naive realism when you think that things are what they appear to be to us that's naive realism there is nothing further to be worried about they are what they are and we can find them out that is naive realism on which early science was based but now the philosophy of science has shown that naive realism is a totally discredited philosophical position and therefore some of my distinguished friends in the philosophy of science are creating a new kind of realism they call it constructive realism in which they admit that scientific knowledge is not really knowledge but it is a construction of the human mind which is very useful we can't deny that it's one of the most sensational impressive constructions of the human mind because modern science and the technology based on it has been able to achieve so many dramatic things which have dwarfed the achievements of religion but it is only in terms of operational knowledge that is we can see in the world some relationships the way things work in themselves as well as in relation to each other and using that knowledge we can make external reality serve our purposes to a certain extent that's what technology is science is seeing how things work and technology is how making things work for our purposes that is operational knowledge it's very important without that knowledge we cannot feed the world's population today without that knowledge we cannot heal and cure many diseases without that knowledge we cannot build bridges and fly aeroplanes and therefore though science is operational knowledge it is not something to be sniffed at it is extremely useful extremely significant one of the greatest achievements of the human reason but it must not make the claim that it knows everything for example the biggest questions in life what am i in this world for what is the purpose of my life But there is no methodology in science by which you can begin to approach those questions these are questions for which we have to find the answers from our substantive reason which is different from our instrumental reason science technology deals with instrumental reason but we human beings have also a capacity for substantive reason to reflect about the meaning of life about values to make some decisions not to get the same certainty as you do in science but to get sufficient certainty in order to be able to operate on that base therefore these friends are saying constructive realism is the new philosophical basis of science science cannot be regarded as true knowledge but science is useful knowledge operational knowledge it has its function but it should not be regarded as knowledge at all fantastic what they are saying they are saying scientific knowledge is not knowledge at all a statement which is not mine but which is made by some of the greatest philosophers of science from the university of vienna in austria from cambridge and from boston and other places they have agreed on this we recently had a seminar in delhi university on this subject the next thing i wanted to say is that science has failed in one of its claims that claim was at the time of the european enlightenment when religion 
was the uniting framework for all knowledge. The Enlightenment said, we don't need religion. Our rationality is a sufficient instrument to unite all knowledge and integrate all knowledge. This is not possible. Science has failed at that point to be the single uniting framework for all human knowledge, taking over from religion. But for two centuries it made that false claim, that it was the true uniting factor. I mean, August Kant saying, all human knowledge has necessarily to pass through three stages, first theological, then metaphysical, and then scientific or positive, and that the two other ways of knowing belong to the childhood and the adolescence of humanity. We must abandon all that and take only scientific knowledge as adult knowledge. That was said in the 19th century and even in the 20th century. Some people repeat that. But that's finished. The claim of science to have replaced religion and metaphysics is false. But the claim of science to be one of the great operational discoveries of the human mind still remains. And it has its function in our society. It is indispensable. It's not simply something which you can say, well, it's fairly good. No, we need it. Without it, we cannot live. But it does not answer our fundamental questions. That is the main limit of reason. Now, there is uh, one other thing that I wanted to say before we open it for questions. Science has come under criticism in at least three ways. One is that at present scientific research is a prisoner of military establishments and large corporations and therefore scientific research does not proceed in the direction which could be most useful to human beings. Even university science departments are now funded by the Defense Department and the Defense Budget, even in my country. And if they are not funded by the Defense Department, then nowadays universities are going to the large corporations to fund the research in the university in science and technology, and the corporations who pay for it also specify which directions that research should go, because they are interested in those directions which will bring them greater profits. And the military is, of course, interested in uh, finding the best way of destroying other people at the minimum cost. That's what science is interested in, that defense is interested in. Unfortunately, a very large proportion of our defense funds for science comes from these two sources, and they decide which way the future of science shall go. We have a need to divert science to apply itself to some of the basic human needs. But we are not able to do it because we are not the ones who control scientific research. The people who fund and therefore control scientific research is not necessarily the government or somebody, some uh, altruistic association, but people with special interests. And therefore, we are worried that science is a prisoner of these motivated people who are not motivated for the best interests of humanity. That is one criticism of science which is substantially to be taken seriously. Second criticism, when science began, one of its principles was that all scientific knowledge should be public knowledge. No knowledge should be kept away from other people. Every scientist has the right to test a scientific proposition. But today that is not the situation. We have a special group of scientists who are sworn to secrecy, not to share their scientific knowledge even with their scientific colleges, colleagues, because they are employed by defense establishments and that knowledge is absolutely private. So even in the scientific community there is now a division. A group of people who keep their scientific knowledge to themselves and a group of others 
who want all knowledge to be public. The very nature of science is put in jeopardy when scientific knowledge becomes limited to a few people and they are the ones who decide uh, how that knowledge shall be developed or used. This is again a violation of the basic principle of science. A third critique which has been now developed is that most of Western knowledge is subject-object knowledge. That is, you presume that the human being can stand outside the world as a subject and regard the world as an object and study it. But this is not possible. We know today that in all knowledge the subject is an essential element. Subjectivity is not something that can be eliminated from knowledge because if there is no subjectivity, there is no knowledge either. All knowledge is conditioned by the structure of human subjectivity, by our senses, by our mental principles. These are the things of our subjectivity and they condition all the knowledge that we have. Therefore, scientific knowledge is not known subjectively objective. Objective in the sense that we can agree upon certain criteria of checking, but not in the sense that it is non-subjective. There was an assumption that in knowledge the source of all error is the subjective, which is false. Subjective, of course, can be the source of error, but the subjective is an essential part of knowledge and because of this separation of subject and object, even human relations have been affected. It's very difficult for a well-trained scientist to let his subjectivity go into imagination, into compassion. These things have become difficult by training and science is beginning to distort the very structure of the human personality of some of our elite. And that is another charge that is being made against science. Another very important charge against science is that science makes too many false claims so that Human knowledge is proscribed in certain areas by the scientific objectivity. Of course, science is not proven knowledge because the nature of scientific proof is inductive, which means that you have a n number of cases on the basis of which you make certain generalizations and you test them n plus one time it doesn't have to be the same way, it could be differently. So, no proven character of scientific knowledge and scientific knowledge should not be used to proscribe other kinds of knowledge. Human beings have several ways of knowing and expressing themselves. Myth is one of them, art is another of them, music, culture itself, the dance, all these things are ways of human beings to express themselves, to express their understanding of reality, to express their relationship to reality. And science has been a kind of sterilizing factor, making people afraid of these things, like myth and art and poetry and religion, as if those had nothing to do with truth and only science. And these are some of the problems of science, but we cannot throw away science, science will continue to be a mainstay of human civilization, but science will also have to recognize its limits and will have to learn to cooperate with other forms of culture like myth, art, uh, music, science, painting, dance and all the rest. Thank you. Now I think we'll have a... We thank Mr. Philip Lascombe for having stimulated this discussion. Now, if you have some questions or comments,
Peace.